Hey, hey, everyone, welcome back to POA for you. My name is Leroy, and today I'm going to do a lesson on prepaid expenses and expense payables. This is applicable for N levels, for O levels, or any accounting student, I, I'm quite sure. Um, and this is at the request of Jay, who's written to me to say that, hey, uh, this is a topic that com uh, can confuse, uh, can be confusing, right? And uh, I think rightfully so, because sometimes I'm a bit confused as well. And what I'll do is I'll share a few certain techniques and thinking to help me navigate through this confusion. Okay, so before we get into this, uh, if you have a friend who you think will benefit from this, please share it with them. It's a free resource for everybody and I think, uh, I hope it would help uh, you and your friends. All right, let's go. Uh, let's see where we are, let's, okay. So let's start with an example. Now, uh, assume that you have um, internet a yearly fee to pay and you know sign up with your telephone provider uh, and uh, or your internet provider and they say hundred dollars a year okay and if your cash and your internet expense is the same or the internet fee is the same then at the end of the year uh, at the end of each year do you think you would be paying have do you think you will have any prepayment or uh, payables to the internet company no, very simple, right? End of each year, the prepaid or the payables portion will be zero because your cash portion is equals to the fee, the internet fee or the expenses. So in this sense, this is the internet expense that goes to a business income statement and the cash payment will be reduced from the cash at bank account. Very straightforward. Now, the confusing thing starts when your payment is not equals to the uh, internet fee that is charged, right? So what if in the same example you have, uh, you consistently pay $90, right? So this is the, over the three years, you have cash payment of $90, internet is $100, right? Um, first year, what would happen is, you know, because this is the first year, so there's nothing at the beginning of the year, no prepay, no prepayment or no payables. But the end of the year, you would see that Hey, you've got a payable of ten dollars because you paid only ninety when the internet expense or fee that you agreed with the uh, internet provider is a hundred dollars a year. So at the end of the year one, you have a payable. Now let's see what happens in year two. Uh, typically, you would think that year two you would start with a deficit, a payable position because that belongs to the payables in year one and that's carry forward to year two. So, but at the end of the year, how much do you think the payables would be? Because I put here $20. Could you tell me why 20? Think about it. Yes, the one $10 is from 2018 and the other part of the $10 is from 2019, as you can see here, right? So this $10 that is uh, payable as a result of this shortfall in payment adds on to the beginning balance from here and it becomes 20 here. Okay? Now, can you do year 3 for me? What is the beginning ba uh, beginning uh, prepaid or payable position? You're right. Minus 20. So, payable of 20. And the ending prepaid or payable position? You're right. Minus 30. Because is this minus 20 here? plus the minus 10 as a result of this cash and expense comparison. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now let's look at uh, how much do you think the internet expense is throughout these three years or each year in these three years, even though we pay $90. The expenses will always be $100, regardless of how much you pay. So an expense, is regardless of the cash flow component you can pay zero right but your expenses will still be a hundred it's just that you will owe a hundred dollars at the end of the year right you can pay two hundred dollars but your expense for that year itself will only will always be a hundred dollars and your excess of hundred dollars that you paid will be just called prepayment 
okay so is there a formula that you can use right because sometimes it can be quite confusing especially when you are dealing with beginning balance and then ending balance because questions questions are like that right they will ask you they'll give you the beginning balance they'll give you the ending balance they'll give you the cash component throughout the year and they'll ask you find out the expenses there is a formula so this is the formula that you can apply the expense equals to beginning minus ending plus cash payment let's see how this works so let's look at 2019 beginning is minus 10 minus minus 20 so minus minus 20 will be minus 10 plus 20 yeah so the 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 these two would be plus 10 already positive 10 and then plus cash payment of 90 equals to 100 voila right and you can apply this to any of these examples it will work and uh this is a permutation of a formula of the root formula of what i have here below uh, you can take a look at it and you know kind of play around with that as well okay so let's uh find out um uh, through another example and test our understanding okay i've got a table here similar to what we had before and i've got beginning balance i've got ending balance but then the the, the there's a mix between prepayment and payables right before it was more straightforward it was just prepayment and I have a cash component here that I pay consistently. Now I want to find out based on these components, what is the utilities expense? Apply this formula, work it out for me. Pause the video and work it out for me. And I'll share it with you right now. Did you get this? Okay, so the formula is easy to apply, but you have to understand the concepts of this as well, right? And understand the spirit of the formula. So if you think about it, let's say for 2018, it's quite straightforward. I don't have any beginning position. I paid 200. At the end of the year, I have prepaid 10. That means I paid in excess of 10. I paid excess of $10. So which means my utility expense, I was supposed to only pay 200 minus 10. Right? So I'm supposed to only pay 190 and that's where I get 190. Let's look at a more complicated one, 2020. I started with overpaying $30 in the beginning. Then I paid 200 and, and therefore that, uh, at the end of this, I have kind of $230 in the pocket, so to speak, right? For this uh, utility expense. But even though with this $230, at the end of the year, the utility company tells me that I still owe $10 because I've used so much this year. So how much did I actually use? 230 plus that 10 that I owe. So that's kind of the logic of it. Important to understand, yeah? Okay, now the, the question papers will always ask you what's the impact on profits if we did not account for, if we simply account for what is paid, the cash component. That means ignore the payables and the prepaid position. And notice I underline profits, okay? So you need to understand first, what is the impact on the expenses itself? So for example, in this one, uh, if my cash payment is $200 and I said that, oh, $200, I'll take it as expenses and I wouldn't care about, you know, the prepaid position, etc. then my expenses is a bit too much than what it should be, okay? So if my expenses is too much, then is my profit going to be higher or lower or understated or overstated? Think about that. So work this out for the three years. Pause the video and I'll show you the answer in a bit. Okay, I'm going to show the answer now. Whoops. So first year, profits is going to be understated because if, you're, uh, if you did not account for the prepaid, that means your uh, utilities expense, your ticket is 200, whatever you pay. But it should only be 190. So your expenses are high, too, too high and therefore your uh, profits will be too low because they are inversely related all right the same thing here if it's 180 and you put 200 as your expenses instead of 180 then there's this inverse relationship or too high and too low same as year one year two it's 240 right the expenses but the cash payment is only 200 so you're going to say that you overstated you understated your expenses if you your expenses are too low that means your profits will be much higher than it should be, okay? Now, the thing is questions will also ask what's the impact on assets, on liabilities and stuff like that. Think through that, right? And see whether you can work out the answer. A hint, you can look at this ending position. A prepayment is an asset, 
a payable is a liability. Some questions may even ask you what's the impact on current assets or non-current assets. These are all current assets and current liabilities. So they have no impact on non-current assets or long-term liabilities. All right. If you don't understand that, send me a question and I'll be happy to clarify. Now, uh, how does this all kind of fall in place in ledgers? Because sometimes the question papers, and I've seen this before, uh, will give you, you know, cash payment, prepaid and uh, position at the beginning or payables position at the end and tell you to work out the utilities expense ledger. And I've lifted this example from the earlier slide, 2019. And we can kind of take a look at how to prepare the utilities ledger uh, to represent this in, in the in the answer to your quest to the exam questions. Okay, there will be more than utilities ledger in here, and I want to show you the kind of what's happening in the background as well, so you understand. Now it starts with the first thing in the year. You have a prepaid position, right, of ten dollars, right, in the beginning of the year. So prepaid utilities is an asset. An asset has a debit balance, so it's a balance brought down with a debit balance $10. The next step that you have to do is to transfer the balance of $10 to the utilities expense account because you want to kind of consolidate everything in the utilities expense account throughout the year. So take this as a transfer where I debit my utilities expense account and I credit my prepaid utilities. So I'm closing off my prepaid utilities by crediting it because this is debit. A balance right and to close it off i have to do the opposite i have to credit it ten dollars and i'm just bringing this ten dollars over to the utilities expense account okay and notice that when i debit and credit this i just put the opposite so if i debit uh, utilities expense then i'm putting the credit description into my particulars here all right i have a i have a session on ledgers in my fundamentals if you don't understand that go take a look um, cash at bank next next uh, event is cash at bank i've paid um cash payment of 200 so in my utilities account i'm doing a debit utilities and credit cash at bank so debit side of utilities expense i put 200 description is cash at bank my rolling balance now is 210 for my utilities expense now at the end of the year it tells me that I have $30 of prepayment. So if I know that out of this 210, there's $30 of prepayment, then I want to recognize that asset and transfer $30 out back into the prepaid utilities account. And this is how I'll do it. Debit prepaid utilities, credit utilities expense. So this $30 is reduced from here. It becomes 180 as my expense for the year, which is this number here that we talked about earlier. And this $30 goes back to the utilities, uh, prepaid utilities account, which is a current asset. All right. Then where does this 180 go? This 180 would be closed off to the profit and loss. And you it will become zero, it will zeroize it to transfer it to the profit and loss account or the income statement or the statement of financial performance they are all they all mean the same thing just different terms and different eras um, and it goes into the other expenses this should be other expenses yeah uh, and it minuses off to get your profit for the year okay this utility expense prepaid utility of thirty dollars will go into the current asset in the statement of financial position or the balance sheet okay that's it hope this is all clear so far and sometimes you may ask why am i doing this I'm doing a, I've done a video or doing a video depending on when you watch this video on uh, uh, accounting theories and these two theories are the underlying uh, concepts that um, you know necessitate what we have talked about in the earlier slides. Uh, you want to learn more about these uh, theories? I put in the links uh, in the description or for the video below. Um, before I leave, let's talk. Let's uh, I'll leave you with a food for thought. How would all we have done apply to income received in advance and income receivables? It's different. We talked about expense, prepaid, prepaid expense, which is kind of like uh, pre, uh, some, some expenses that you paid in advance. So it's prepaid expense. Income receivables is similar to uh, expense payable. So, so think about that. I'll do a video on this as well, but start thinking about this because this will be tested. All right. Thank you so much. Once again, it's been uh, really enjoyable doing these videos. Keep your questions coming. If you, there's any topics you want me to focus on, happy to do so. Subscribe, 
turn on the notification bell and like this video if you need uh, if you if you do all right bye bye